Hi guys and welcome to the trading show. This week we are gonna talk about Markets, stocks rebound Our portfolio, Dow Jones hits fresh record high Tip of the week, breakout on the 30 year US treasury bond and the weekly rollovers And if you are interested in systematic trading then subscribe to our channel I am Francesco Placci, head of R&D at Ungar Academy. Let's start from the market overview to see together what happened during the week. Positive week for equity indices, which reacted to the decline of the previous week. We see positive returns for US equity indices, but also for European ones. In this graph, we see the Nasdaq. It was the one that had fallen the most which has been able to recover almost 3.5%. As for the bonds, still negative week, you see we are right now on the lows. This is the T-bond future, but if we take a look at the other bond future, the situation is very similar. Moving on to the energy sector, we still see gasoline in great trend. You see it is at very important highs. It shows a well-defined trend, while oil is in a consolidation phase. As for meat, positive returns for Linux, which is at the high. Mixed returns for soft commodities, while for all cereals we see negative returns, with the only exception of the bean oil future that is in a very strong uptrend. As regards currencies, very little to report, except of course for the Bitcoin, which recovered the 14.7% this week and recently reached its historical highs. As for historical volatility, we see rising ranges due to the decline that equity indices have recently experienced. Very high percentile values for the Nasdaq, both in the short term and in the long term, because it is the market that has suffered the greatest decline. If we switch to the implied volatility, we see a much quiet situation. The little spike of volatility that occurred last week has largely returned. The only exception remains the long-term volatility, so the VIX one year, which is still lower than the VIX six months. Apart from this small exception, I will say that the situation is back to normal. The VIX is at very low levels, a sign that at the moment traders do not have a particular concern for the future trend of the stock markets. After seeing some key statistics on financial markets and given the fact that automated traders also use this data to build their trading strategies, as usual, we will now take a look at our portfolio of trading strategies to see how systems have reacted to current market conditions. Hi guys, from Alessandro Danos and welcome to this new appointment with the analysis of our portfolio. This week I want to talk about the uh, Dow Jones uh, future, uh, which uh, um, reached a new all-time high during the last uh, week and uh, so we can go uh, and see how our strategies uh, performed on this uh, underlying. We can start from this first uh, strategy, uh, there is a bias, uh, in specifically is an intra-week uh, bias so the strategy enters long on uh, a, a specific uh, date. In this case, uh, it enters long on uh, Tuesday. Uh, we can say uh, Monday at the end of the session. And uh, close the position on Thursday at the end of the session. While uh, the short side enters on Friday session, uh, so the last session of the week and closes the position uh, intraday, so uh, in the same session. 
Uh, we can see that uh, during uh, 2020 this kind of approach uh, paid uh, very much. Uh, we can see here a huge rally during the uh, pandemic, then a drawdown uh, in, during the last uh, final months of 2020, and now uh, a recovery that uh, um, lasted until uh, today where the strategy uh, reached uh, new equity peaks, uh, thanks of course uh, to this uh, beautiful trade. We can see that the strategy here entered at a price of $31,650 and closed the position at $32,380. So a very big uh, trade uh, of uh, 7200s, we can see here, 7200s uh, dollars of course. Um, here we enter on this strategy with uh, two contracts, contracts and that's because um, the Dow Jones uh, uh, among the uh, equity index futures is the uh, most uh, scalable as the big point value is uh, just uh, $5. Now we can move to the next uh, strategy. Uh, this one is a trend following uh, strategy. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the trend following uh, method uh, approach is the most uh, efficient, uh, or we can say is um, quite good on this underlying, while uh, the other uh, brothers uh, for ex of this uh, um, instrument uh, are pretty much uh, mean reverting. Of course, also the Dow Jones may be used uh, with a, a mean reverting uh, uh, approach, but uh, um, I want to say uh, that uh, also the trend following regards, uh, regarding this uh, underlying is, uh, could be a very uh, good approach. And also may help uh, our portfolio during uh, volatility, high volatility phases on the on these markets, because of course uh, this uh, un strategy uh, try to follow the volatility that is generated. So uh, it will uh, take long position when the market is going up, while it will take a short position uh, if the market is uh, collapsing. We can see that in the last week the strategy uh, took a good uh, long trade of around $600, then it took a stop loss, uh, really unfortunate I might say because then the market uh, rose again. But uh, all in all, uh, we can s see that the strategy behaved uh, really well also during uh, the last year, 2020, year of the uh, pandemic. Uh, uh, and uh, we can see that uh, looking at the uh, equity uh, curve detailed, that this kind of approach uh, performed really well uh, also during the last year. You can see that this strategy that is out of sample from uh, 2016 performed really well uh, during 2020 and now is uh, near its equity peaks. Hi everyone and welcome from uh, Andrea Nebbiolo. Today we will have a look to the US Treasury bond uh, future and this future is built on the 30 year years US Treasury bonds. This future is listed at the uh, CBOT exchange that is part of the CME group and uh, uh, the multiplier value is equal to $1,000 and uh, in fact you can see here the contract unit is 100,000 but uh, uh, here on the price quotation field you can see uh, that the uh, contract is built on uh, 100 basis point uh, so the uh, resulting value multiplier is equal to $1,000 and the trading hour is the classical one of the CME group in general of the CME in general in fact, it goes from 5 p.m. to 4 p.m. of the next day, from Sunday to Friday. Of course, we are talking about Chicago time. 
and uh, the uh, critical aspect of this product is uh, the uh, minimum price fluctuation and the tick value. In fact, uh, the minimum price fluctuation is equal to uh, 1 30 second of one point, and uh, uh, this gives a result, final result in terms of tick value of 31.25 and uh, this is the main problem of this product because with uh, this uh, huge uh, tick value it will be extremely hard to find a good average trade to face effectively the impact of the commissions and slippage. But now let's concentrate on three different uh, triggers. All of them are uh, belonging to the uh, breakout uh, category and the first one is the breakout on yesterday's extreme uh, yesterday's sessions extremes uh, levels the second one is uh, uh, the breakout on uh, the last two sessions uh, uh, extremes levels and uh, the third one is the uh, breakout on the highest high within the latest five uh, sessions and vice versa uh, for the short side so the lowest low of the um, last five sessions. So with the, those uh, triggers, I tried to optimize the uh, start time, so uh, the time from which we uh, can try to, to enter. And uh, this just because um, I wanted to find directly if there was a precise moment of the day in which it was more profitable to enter. So I tried directly to, directly to optimize the uh, start time, the start trade uh, time. And as you can see from here, there is no positive result, or at least there is one positive result, but uh, it may be just uh, um, uh, a lucky case. So I wouldn't take this value as uh, a good uh, value. And uh, we can go to the second trigger. And for what regards this trigger, also in this case we have uh, no positive value and uh, in this case we have properly no positive uh, value. So I, I would say at this point that most probably uh, this kind of uh, approach is not the most profitable one of course on this uh, product and uh, uh, some other some other uh, types of strategies may be uh, more interesting. So let's go finally to uh, the last uh, um, trigger. And uh, in this case, we have uh, um, no positive results. As you can see, in a, we can start in any moments of the day, but the uh, net profit would, would be still uh, negative. So it means uh, that there is no possibility uh, this uh, strategy uh, would work uh, in uh, with this trigger. This, this underlying would not work uh, with uh, those uh, triggers. So even if we uh, didn't find any positive results uh, at this moment, uh, we know uh, that uh, most probably the trend following approach is not the best uh, one for this product. And uh, it, it, it would be better to avoid, of course, this kind of uh, approach. Of course, uh, I could have tried to go more in the details, uh, to put uh, more uh, conditions, uh, and uh, most probably I would have found uh, something uh, nice or uh, um, something positive. But uh, usually when you uh, start from a very bad beginning, so a script uh, that initially doesn't uh, give the expected uh, and good results, uh, uh, usually, if you force too much the uh, development, you ju just risk to go into a severe overfitting situation. And uh, at this point, it will be uh, pretty sure that this strategy will lose, uh, um, will lose money consistently in the future. Next Friday will be the technical expiry of the Triple Witches the simultaneous expiry of index future, index options and stock options. As for American markets, we'll have the settlement date of the mini S&P, the Nasdaq, the S&P 400 and as regards Europe, 
FTSEMIB, DEX and all the other European stock indices. I also remind you that on March 17th there will also be the expiry of the VIX future and that the main currencies will also expire the next week. However, as mentioned last week, we have already rolled them over because the greater liquidity for currencies is already on the June contract. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about the trading method we at the Unger Academy use and teach our students, not to miss out on reading Andrea Unger's new book. It's called The Unger Method, the winning strategy of the four-time world trading champion. And in it, Andrea explains step-by-step step the trading method that let him win four World Cup trading championships and that you too can use to improve your approach to the markets and achieve your trading goals. And the greatest thing is that now you can grab it for free by just paying for shipping and handling. In the book there is also a rich bonus area with links to videos reserved only for those who get the book. Don't miss the chance to take your trading to the next level. Click the link in this video and get your free copy of the Unger method now. You pay only shipping and handling.